Hello everyone! It's Lara here, and today I have a special video for you, Watercolor Galaxies in 7 Easy Steps. So, the first step is to prepare. You'll need some supplies. Here I have a mixed media pad, but you can use any paper you like. I also use a metal ruler, a, a cutting board, which I'm also working on, and an X-Acto knife. That's to cut the paper, you'll see. I also use a 1 inch oval mop brush. That's for the large washes. And a small eight, number 8 round. That's for the detail. Another brush I use is actually a very old toothbrush. It's been cleaned, don't worry. <laughs> That's for some spatter techniques. I'll be using the Winsor & Newton Watercolor Art Masking Fluid. Definitely want to make sure to give that a good shake. And for my watercolors, I have a set of Yarka 24 Pan Watercolors. You can use any watercolors that are available to you. Also, I'm going to need a, a plastic eraser. I like this one by Statler, but you can use any white plastic eraser. Alright, so as far as everything else, um, you could use some painter's tape or some low-tack tape if you prefer. Um, I'm not going to, but that's okay if you want to do that. Another item which you may need, but it's not required, is some designer gouache. I'll use this and um, at the end for, for extra detail, but you don't need it if you don't want to. Okay, first off, I need to cut my paper down. Um, you can use any size paper you want, or you can use a coloring book, whichever you prefer. Um, but here I'm just cutting little swatches of paper uh, just to for this demo. Another thing I'm going to be using in this step is masking fluid. You want to make sure to give this a really good shake and um, then you can dip your toothbrush into the masking fluid. Now you only want a little bit on there so just the front half of the toothbrush. Set that aside and then you want to angle your toothbrush down. Now this will get messy so you want a nice workspace like this plastic mat and then just go to town with your thumb over the bristles. You can see that I'm pulling back and it's spraying the masking fluid all over. <laughs> this is so much fun. So I'll speed up the video for parts of this uh, tutorial just to, you know, save you some time. You can feel free to pause at any time if you need to. Anyway, I'm going to go clean up and then once the masking fluid is dried, I go ahead and get off any big globs that I don't like with my fingernail. If you don't want to use your fingernails, you can also use um, a blade or a toothpick, anything that will be small and abrasive enough to get that little bit of masking fluid that you don't want off the paper. The reason I'm doing this is there are some blobs that are just too large or strange shaped and I don't really want them. So you can inspect your, your spatter and uh, remove whatever you don't like. Here you can see I'm using a super technical pinky uh, method. Here's some really big blobs, so I'm going to get those off. And then once you're satisfied with the status of your stars on your paper, you want to make sure that everything's dry and that your workspace is nice and cleaned up. And let's go right on into step three, which is the first layer of watercolor. So here we're just going to splooge on some paint. Uh, really doesn't matter what colors you pick. Um, galaxies come in all different colors and shapes. The one trick that I do want to express though is make sure to get some white space or some light areas in your galaxy. Uh, it really gives a lot of depth and dimension. You'll also want to use most likely analogous colors. That are, that's colors that are similar to each other on the color wheel. If you're not sure about how to use color yet, that's totally fine. This is a beginner tutorial. But I've provided four different color palettes in this video for you to follow along if you like. 
Also, you'll notice that I'm not mixing my colors. I'm just taking them right from my watercolor palette to my paper. In later tutorials, I can show you how to do a more advanced form of galaxies with color mixing. But for right now, we're just having fun splooging any old color you feel like onto that piece of paper. So once you start getting a defined shape, you just want to sort of work in that area and, you know, let well enough alone once it's, it's good. Um, it may not look the way you want it to right now, but that's totally okay. Um, we're going to come back over it with two additional layers later, so don't fuss too much. Um, just sort of get a general idea of what you want it to look like. And now you'll see I'm going to go through other color palettes. So here's a red, yellow, and orange palette. Really, really fun. Uh, kind of like a fiery galaxy or a nebula, I guess. I guess some of these could be considered nebulas. But anyway, here's another yellow, but this time I'm adding green to it. So for this first layer, you want to use a big, big brush and a lot of water. Um, don't worry about having too much control at the moment. You're just trying to get basic shapes down. You'll see in between each little, you know, painting, um, I do make sure to keep my area nice and clean. Also, if you're not sure about um, your areas, you can always use a paper towel to get some light colors in there. So moving right along, we have step four, which is vibrant color. So now we're going to focus first on making sure the lightest parts of the page are really nice. So I'm going to remove any weird watermarks or stains with just some clean water and a clean brush. And you can see you can sort of dissolve that line and fade it out. This is a great trick. Um, it really makes it a lot nicer uh, when you know how to fix your mistakes. So then, once you're happy with the way the light areas look, let's move into the dark areas. So th the key with galaxies is that they're usually really bright, saturated colors. So in this situation, I'm using really deep purples, dark blues, and some deep greens. And I'm just going around the edges and avoiding the light areas entirely. At this point, too, I'm starting to, to really define the shape of the galaxy and how I really want it to look at the end. So basically how I do this is I take the big blobs that I had down and then I sort of look at what they might look like and, and sort of just refine and um, moosh around until it looks right. So here it kind of looks like a little turtle, but not quite. I don't know. Anyway, you can make them any shape and color that you want. There's no right or wrong. Um, this color palette is a very uh, commonly used galaxy water watercolor palette, uh, the, the purples, blues, and greens, so that's why I wanted to show it to you, but you can make it any color you want. So you can see here, I'm just sort of mooshing colors around, trying to get more depth with my color. Moving along to the red one, here I really want to add a lot more vibrancy. So to get more vibrant colors, you really want to make sure to use less water and more pigment. The reason why I swap to a smaller brush is just for this reason. The bigger brush holds a lot more water and so the colors will be less saturated because they're diluted with the water. But when you start to get down to smaller size brushes, it really does allow you to control the exact amount of water on your brush. You'll also see me from time to time press my brush against the side of the cup after I wash it. Um, that's really to help control exactly how much water is being put down. The darker the color, the less water you want. So here I'm moving on to the purple in the purple and red scheme. And here you can see I'm just holding each little page down with my fingers. But if it bothers you to do this, you can also tape them off, tape them down. Um, I just wanted to go right to the edge of the page. Now, I've dirtied up my water quite a lot, so here's a little break for me to switch it up. And the reason why is because yellow gets muddy very easily. So you want to keep your cl water clean for the, for the yellow bits. 
And I put down the yellow first because it also will bleed into that green and create a really pretty color. But I wanted to have some pure yellow in this uh, painting. Dropping colors into other colors is so much fun and I encourage you to give it a try. Um, so now we're going to move on to step five. This is after the pages are completely dry. You want to go in with the very darkest, darkest colors. So here I have a really deep green. Oh, I'm fixing a water line. You can see it happens all the time and that's no problem whatsoever. So here I'm using the very darkest colors. So here's a very, very deep, deep green and I'm adding it to this green page. Um, later on you'll see I do use black, but I love using really dark saturated colors over black. And the reason why is it gives it more depth, dimension, and interest. Um, sometimes black can feel a little dead. Um, and, and so if you use really, really deep, deep dark colors instead, it gives a similar effect to black, but it has a, a little bit more interest to it. So now here I'm finally getting into the black. I'm using it on a page that has completely dried, so the black will not muddy up the colors that are underneath. What's great is, um, you can see throughout this process, I don't use any straight lines at all. In fact, the more weird and wiggly and organic they are, <laughs> the better. So make sure to kind of swish your brush around and have some fun, and don't do any straight lines at all. Alright, so here we have the darkest colors going in. Now, deep dark colors are what give the galaxy the depth that it needs to feel like it's outer space. So I'm going to add at least a little bit of black to every single little page that I've made here. Now, for these, this particular one, I'm not going to use black ar around every single edge. You can see I will outline most of the page, but some of it I'll leave without any black. That's totally okay. Alright, looks like I'm going back in on one of these pages that I feel doesn't have enough color saturation. That's okay. I'm adding a little bit more red in there. And now moving on to this fiery nebula galaxy. Um, I, I felt like when it dried, it, it drew, dried a little too dull. So I'm adding even more red. And now kind of just creating one section of the painting that has black in it. And here I'm creating kind of like a cloudy shape. And because I wanted this one to feel like a galaxy, like a spiral galaxy, I put in a little spiral in that center of brightness. All right, now that the green one has dried completely, the benefit of working in multiples is that now I'm going to go ahead and add the black to that one as well. And you can see this one is probably the weirdest, but I kind of like it. Um, when I added the black, I didn't worry too much about what, where I put it. I just sort of squiggled my brush wherever I wanted. So sometimes that's really fun. And you can see I kind of like that so much I'm adding that squiggly bit to another one. Just sort of swishing my brush around in kind of scribbly patterns. Alright, so now that it's completely dry, we have step six, which is unmasking. Now you have to make sure that this is completely dry, because if it's not dry, then you could end up tearing up the paper surface. Now when you use the eraser, you want to go lightly at first because you're not sure how the paper will react to the abrasion. However, once you're pretty confident that it can take the abrasion, uh, go ahead and start giving it a good old rub and you'll see the magic happen before your eyes. The stars that you put down with the masking fluid will suddenly appear and it's this is one of my favorite steps of this process. So it might take a while, but you want to make sure to get it all up because once the masking fluid is down for about a week, it will adhere to the paper. That does depend on the fluid that you have and, and the brand that you have, but in general, you don't want to leave the masking fluid on for too long because it will eventually become bonded with the page. Okay, I'm going to speed this up a bit because you don't have to see me do it real time. You get the idea. 
So anyway, I'm going to erase all of those little stars, and look at how magical it's starting to look. So much fun, and it's so much faster doing it this way than doing every single little dot individually. The magic of a toothbrush. All right, so let's do the other ones just so you can see how they turn out. Here's this purpley red one. Oh, it looks so pretty with all of the stars coming out. Yay. All right. <laughs> so there's that one. Next, we have the yellow and green one. Now, this one didn't have as many stars as the others. I don't know why or what happened, but there's always a way to fix this. So I'll show you how to add more stars after if you're not completely satisfied with the end result. And the fiery one. This one I feel like is the most dramatic of the ones I've done. And so here again, I'm just erasing all those little dots. Make sure that you get them all up. All right. So step seven is bonus stars. If you've done your painting and you find that there are spots where it could use a couple more little stars, no problem. I'm using here Designer's Gouache by Winsor & Newton. You only want to use a little tiny bit. Actually, that is a little too much. It's really hard to squeeze a teeny tiny little bit out of there. So just use a little, little brush, or I'm using the eight round and just not putting any pressure on the tip. But use whatever brush you're comfortable with. And go ahead and just add a couple little stars as desired. So I'm just adding stars in places where I feel like maybe it could use a couple more sparkles. And also, there could have been places that I rubbed the big globs of masking fluid off of previously. Well, now I'm going back in and adding little stars to it. So I'm going to speed this up as well because you don't have to see me real time doing this. You know how to do dots. So here's me adding it to all of these little guys. So much fun. This step is optional. It looked pretty decent on its own. I just like to add even more sh sparkle and shine. All right. So much fun to do these. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, please give a like and don't forget to comment and subscribe. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful, magical time.